Hey friends, this is Wendy with loveandstampin.com and we are making a 3D pop-up card today. Before we get into it, I wanted to just flash this on the screen. I do have a fun fold class available starting today, only through Wednesday the 23rd. You can either purchase it for $35 or you can place a $35 order using the host code that you saw there on the screen and get the class for free. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's get into the card. We're using Hey Sports Fan Collection. I love this paper. I love the stamp set. And it's really funny because it is not something I ordered initially. I really didn't think that it was gonna be something that I used. And then it ended up being one of my favorites. Isn't that interesting how that happens? So you're gonna need some Bumblebee cardstock. Four and a quarter by 11, four and a quarter by 10 and a half, two and three quarters of an inch by six, and then some designer series paper pieces, four inches by five and a quarter, one and three quarters by four, two and a half by four, and you do not need to write any of this down or try to pause the video and get the information because I made a free project sheet for you. Yes, I did. So you can go right on over to my blog and print that off the link to it is below the video. So here we are scoring our first four and a quarter by 11 inch piece at five and a half to make a regular, you know, fold card. Then we're scoring our second piece of cardstock at, this is the four and a quarter by 10 and a half inch piece at a half inch, one and three quarters of an inch, three and three quarters of an inch and five inches. And we're doing that on the long side. Then we're taking our little six inch strip here and we're gonna score it at, uh, <laughs> I just lost my spot. We're gonna score that one at a half inch and one and three quarters of an inch, okay? So the part that you want, you see here what I'm doing, the part that you want facing the front is um, the part you're gonna add your designer series paper to, okay? You're going to fold your other piece of cardstock up over the top of this. So it is important that you put down your designer series paper piece first. You're gonna fold and burnish all the edges and you're gonna fold this up and you're gonna fold it in. You see how I did that there? Because we wanna make sure that this is how it closes. So you're gonna put adhesive on your tab Got to get my adhesive going. This is Stamp and Sill Plus. I really love it. People seem to have a love hate relationship with it. I do fine with it, but you know, you may not. I don't know. So you fold this in half on that second score line and push it down, and now it's glued. And now you've got a box at the bottom of your beginnings of your card, I guess you could say. Okay, so that's how that part looks. And then, of course, we have to add our designer series paper before we go to our next step. So again, all of these pieces are written out for you. All the paper pieces you need, the instructions you need are all written out for you on that little project sheet I have over on my blog. Here, we're gonna fold on our score lines again, and then we're gonna add our designer series paper, and then we're going to add this piece to our card base. And we do that by adding some adhesive at the bottom of it, and then also on that little half inch tab at the top that I'm doing right now. Okay, so here at the bottom, cause this is gonna go over the front, and then also uh, at the top. And here I'm just showing you, you could place this wherever you want. I chose to place it in the middle, but you could place it to the side, um, either side, however you want to. I find it easiest to stand it up like this to make sure that the bottom is flush together. And then we are going to, you can't really fold this. You have to kind of fold it down, fold it over, and then adhere it. And the reason for that is because this is what it's gonna look like when it's in the envelope. It's gonna be flat. So you wanna make sure that your folds are lining up correctly so that when you lay it flat, um, it will go in your envelope nicely. So my recommendation is to fold these as you've seen me do here. And if you need to go back, rewind, pause, really look at what I did, um, that's my recommendation for adhering these boxes, if you will, to the front of this card. 
and then we're adhering this whole piece to the front of the card base we already cut. Now, in my class that I show, I show many different ways to make these types of pop-up display cards, um, different sizes, different shapes, things like that. Um, and I have a few extra samples besides the cards that you saw here at the beginning. Um, again, that's that class is $35 if you wanna take the full class, okay? And videos, PDF, thank you card, the whole nine yards, be entered in the giveaways, get access to my VIP group, the whole thing. You can either order the class for $35 and that's February 19th through February 23rd. There's a link below the video. So if you're not in the United States or if you're a demonstrator and you don't wanna place an order with me, you can still purchase the class and you'll get all the accesses to all the things. If you are not a demonstrator and you do live in the US, you can place a $35 order with me using that host code that you saw on the front of the screen. It will also be in the description below the video and I will give you the class for free. How fun is that? So after the 23rd, this will not be available anymore. Five days, people. Five days is all you have to get access to this. So it is four fun fold 3D pop-up type cards. They are so fun. They use all kinds of different products so that you can see lots of different ideas. I have additional samples provided and in addition, I'm gonna donate $5 to every order of the class to the Alzheimer's Association. So here I'm just stamping and doing some decorative stuff because we're gonna put some really cute stuff on the front of this card and bring it all together with uh, adorable decor. So I'm using that stamp set, uh, the Hey Sports Fan stamp set. I actually don't think that's what it's called, but I call all of these products Hey Sports Fan. And I'm just going to be real honest with you. I do not know why Stampin' Up! doesn't just call everything the same thing. Like, hey, sports fan dies. Hey, sports fan stamp set. Hey, sports fan paper. <laughs> but they don't. There's got to be a reason. I'm sure there's a very perfectly good explanation for it. I just don't know the reason. So, anyway. Um... So I'm just doing some stamping and I'm using this little post-it note to kind of mask off the outside area of this flag because I don't want to get stars all over the place on the outside of it because I'm going to die cut it. So I want them to stay inside. So here I'm just going to add my die cut and we're going to run it through that little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine, which I love. I did a reel recently on Instagram and it was like show two things that are a flex in your niche and if you don't know what a flex is it's just kind of like saying like haha i'm so amazing type thing and it said like show what would be a flex in your niche but like nobody else would know about and so i showed that i had the mini machine which is this one and the regular size stamp and cut emboss yes i have both and um, in fact, I've got one that I'm going to be doing a giveaway with in my VIP group. So you never know, you might, you know, be involved in that giveaway. Um, but I've got one, a mini machine here that I'm, I've been hoarding that I want to use as a giveaway. So I'll be doing that soon, probably in my VIP group. You can be part of my VIP group if you are a customer. Um, and you are a customer if you have ordered something from me. So if you've purchased... Um, my class or if you have placed a Stampin' Up! order that makes you a customer and you will have access to that VIP Facebook group. I should say only United States residents are are able to get products from me so there's that. All right so I'm gluing together two little strips of silver foil here. Now I didn't even measure these. I just cut them and made them like they're I think they're like three and a half inches long they're not even on the project sheet um because you could use anything you could use solid cardstock you could use literally anything I die cut a piece of knight of navy from the dies for this edge of this flag and then I'm gonna glue those pieces to this little stick 
for lack of a better word, that I have created. And, um, and that will make our flag. And then I have many other pieces that we're going to die cut because the paper from this set is amazing and the die cuts coordinate with the paper. So we're going to cut those. And then I've already cut out a bunch of little tickets from the Poppy Parade. So at this point in the video, if you are new here, this is where me and my friends hang out and have story time. If you don't like that, that's not your gig. You can mute your video or you can go print that project sheet. Or if you're new, you might want to hang out and enjoy story time and learn what it's all about. So diving into story time, we're going to talk about a few random things. I kind of just have random ramblings this week. Okay, friends. So hang with me here. Um, first and foremost, we, my husband and I have been sucked in to two things. First, we watched Catching Killers on Netflix. Um, for those of you who are not new here, you know I like murdery shows. I am very intrigued by the psychology of so serial killers and all of that kind of stuff. I listen to a lot of true crime stuff and watch a lot of true crime stuff. And so we binge watched Catching Killers. It was only eight episodes. Uh, the seasons are only four episodes long. So it's not very long or time consuming to watch them. Um, it was really good. It wasn't, I would have been more fascinated to know a little bit more of the behind the scenes or a little bit more of the psychology of stuff, but it was good. I would definitely watch it again. Back to the card real quick. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to arrange all this stuff. Okay, so um, so that, that was that show. Now we are watching Night Stalker. And oh my lord, first of all, I started it we started it two days ago. We're several, I don't know how many episodes. The episodes are long. It is creepy and scary. Please do not watch it with children around. Please do not watch it late before you're going to bed because it is about a man who comes into your house at night. So, yeah. So I just, we don't know what happened. We don't know, you know, we're still in the middle of it. So I can't tell you the end result. I'm assuming they caught him. Um, but we have really enjoyed this show. It is good. So that's what we've been binge watching lately because, you know, Yellowstone is over. 1883 is over. Yeah, we're TV people. We are TV people. Um, but really more in the winter. I don't know if you guys have this experience. In the summer, we don't watch very much TV at all. We obviously live in Northern California, so we are outdoors a lot. And even honestly in the winter, we can be outdoors, but it's just dark really early. So usually by the time my husband gets home from work, it's almost getting dark and we're having dinner. And so we watch a lot of TV in the winter months. So that's been going on. We've been obsessively watching that. This last weekend was interesting. We had a retirement party to go to um, at a local brewery. And then, and we went there and we were there for uh, about an hour and 45 minutes. And then we had a celebration of life to attend, um, which was not as exciting. Um, this young man, 37 years old, um, at the time of his death, he was stung by a bee, y'all. Yep, allergic to bees. And the story goes he had, and, and this is all hearsay, I never really got to ask his brother. So this is kind of like pieced together from people that were close to them. But basically, um, he had been stung by a bee, used his EpiPen, and then three weeks later, he was at home, got stung by a bee again, and had an EpiPen, but it, it did, wasn't doing the job. So apparently he called his parents who live on the same property. They came, called 911. He was unconscious when they arrived. They called 911. Um, and he, this happened in January? Uh, no. It was maybe late December. I don't know, because the time from when he passed to the time he had they had the memorial or the celebration of life was a big gap. 
And the hearsay is that the father um, had a really difficult time processing it because he felt somehow responsible that he should have performed CPR immediately when he arrived on the scene. Um, and he didn't, and he was waiting for the ambulance. And, you know, those are the kinds of things you can go over your, in your mind till you are a crazy person. I think, I mean, I don't know. I've never lost a child. Um, this, and so I just don't want to pass any judgment. All I'm saying is my heart breaks for him. So the celebration of life was actually really beautiful and it was fun, dare I say, fun, which is what this this man would have wanted. He would have wanted people to have fun. And we talked and visited with people. We had some drinks. We laughed. Um, we told stories. It was It was actually really, it was the most enjoyable celebration of life situation I've ever been in. And I, when we left there, I told my husband, that is how I want, like, if I go first, please make sure that that is what it's like. Like, I want some religious stuff because I, because I am Christian, but I also want it to be like fun where people laugh and have a good time and remember the best parts of me. And so Anyway, it was good. And then after that, my husband and I went to a winery, uh, a tasting room, and we had ourselves another glass of wine. And we just had a good old time that day, you guys, even though we attended a celebration of life. And, you know, it was just the two of us. And we just had a wonderful day together. It was so nice. And the sun was out and the weather was perfect. It was like 76 degrees. It was fabulous. Okay, if you want any of the products I use today, you can shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com. There are links below the video in the description. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And until I see you next time, keep your fingers inky, people. Talk to you soon.